I'm having trouble letting go of grief of my mother, dad, brother, and a much loved cat. It's like I'm afraid of losing them again if I let go. How do I move on? Okay, this is a fabulous question. Thank you for asking this. So you just raised something <clears throat> that's really important, and I think it's fairly widespread. That in a way, what you're describing is that the pain that you feel regarding their loss is also a kind of connector or connection that you have between your mother and your father and your brother and your cat. That the pain is at least something that links you to them. And you're afraid of letting go of the pain because if you let go of the pain, you would be in that, in that way of thinking about things, you'd be letting go of them as well. So what I did with my dog, what I did with Sam, is while he was dying, I was not just connecting with him physically in the room, with my eyes looking into his eyes and speaking to him and holding his, his head in my hands, but I was also intermittently closing my eyes and taking myself into the spiritual realm into a meditative state. You can think of that as a prayer state, or you can think of it as a hypnotic state. And in that state, I was also meeting with him there. And I have tracks on my YouTube channel for grief regarding the loss of a pet. I have another track regarding the loss of a person. Blue Sky Hypnosis on YouTube. You can search on that little, that little magnifying glass. Just, just put in the word grief. And those tracks will guide you through the same process I was taking myself through helping him transition, helping him cross over, being able to see him playing with other dogs in this beautiful meadow of green grass, seeing my spirit guides all around him. The next thing that I did after he was gone, physically gone, is that I wrote poetry about his passing. Now, I don't normally write poetry. It's only when I feel some pretty intense sadness that I feel like I have to. You don't have to write poetry, but I think writing something about this beloved person, for example, so take your mother, writing about her, writing about the things that she did for you, writing about your best memories with her, writing about how it feels that she's gone now, putting it on paper is a way of getting it out of your psyche and onto a page. And you're going to cry. So many of my clients who come in have been acculturated not to cry. In fact, they often will apologize to me for crying. We have to get away from this. We have to realize that crying is just as natural for us as laughter. It's just as natural for us as sleeping or, or even going to the bathroom. And if you try to stop any one of those things, you're going to have a lot of problems. So, you know, writing this, I called it an elegy. It's a poem for the dead. Writing this involved a lot more crying, a lot more processing, putting it out on the paper. I happened to turn mine into a video, but you don't have to do that either. And then the next thing that I did was what these videos on my channel would guide you through, and that is meeting with him in spirit, asking him, are, are you happy where you are? Noticing that he's happy, asking him if I did anything wrong. Did I make a mistake? Did I pull the trigger too fast on euthanasia? Did I go too slowly? Did I make any mistakes when you were alive? And just as an aside, my wife and I had created these, this voice for him, which was you know, kind of like this, we used to be actors, this kind of like lisping voice, and he was very he was sort of passive aggressive, and it was just like this joke between us. And when I met with him in spirit, he didn't sound like that at all. He sounded like, like a seven-year-old boy, like really sweet and very earnest. And he actually called me Peter. <laughs> and I asked him if he would call me dad. And he said, sure, I'll call you dad. So he called me dad. And meeting with him like that, say three times, put the fear that I had made a mistake to rest, even though consciously I knew I, knew I hadn't. And it helped me understand and realize that I can connect with him anytime I want that he's good where he is, he's happy where he is, that he will greet me when it's my turn. 
but that I haven't lost this connection with him, that it's still there. It's not as satisfying as wrestling with him. You know, it's not as satisfying as, as patting him, but it's still there. It's not that binary thing of one minute they were here and the next minute they're gone. That's, it's like some kind of weird torture. And the more I think we embrace our spiritual nature and the more we enter into that realm in our consciousness, the more we can let go of, in your case, your mother and your brother and your father and your cat, because you're not totally letting them go. You're letting go of the pain. It's almost like the difference between having them all living in the back room of your house or having them live in their own houses and you get together with them, holidays and special events and whenever you all decide you want to do that. We feel like we can have a strong relationship with our family members without, you know, like that one's parents and so on, without, and siblings, without actually living in the same house. So a really long way of answering your question, the how do I do this, flower to the people. I want to put your, your comment back up here again. To reiterate, what I would suggest is that you start by writing. Just pick one of them, or if they seem like a team, write to your parents as a pair. And write things like your happiest memories with them, you know, what you appreciated the most about them, what they taught you, what you're grateful for. This is going to produce tears. That's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. And after you're done writing this, then go onto my channel, Blue Sky Hypnosis on YouTube, and bring up the grief for the loss of a person. And take yourself through that same process that I was describing to you before, where you meet with one or both of your parents, for example, and then later another time, perhaps you meet with your brother. Or, you, or it may be that they all come at once. That's a very likely possibility too. And the first time you do this, the first time you meet with them in spirit, you'll be sobbing. You'll be crying really hard. But this is important. This is how we discharge all of this pent up energy and then do it again. And the second time you meet with them, you will be crying, but probably not as hard as the first time. By the third or fourth time that you meet with them, the tears will begin to abate. And when that happens, I think that you will contact me and say, I feel like I was able to move through this. I feel like something has shifted or changed.